Hi, everybody. This is Douglas Black for Ultrabook Review with Andre. Hi, everyone. I'm Andre from ultrabookreview.com. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the best laptops of 2018. Yeah, it's a good time to do it. Um, hope everybody had a good Christmas and New Year. Um, so we're going to go over our, our personal picks for the best laptops of 2018. Um, uh, it's not, there's definitely no, no best laptop. There's no perfect laptop, never has been. Um, but I think 2018 was a year that was a little bit um, particularly difficult, I think, um, because we're in a transitionary period for things like ports. Um, so we'll start off, uh, let's start off talking about our, our first pick or your first pick, and it's similar to my first pick. So why don't you talk about mm. yours? <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start with our, our, our picks for, uh, for Ultrabooks, for pen and light laptops. And uh, for me, my favorite in this category is the Dell XPS 13. Um, and it's not just the latest generation, the 9370, which was released in the second part of, uh, of 2018, but also the first generation that was released early in uh, 2018. And there are a few reasons for that. Uh, the second part, the second gener the second update, the 9370, which is the latest model right now, uh, improves on a couple of different things on performance, on thermals, uh, and on build quality. Uh, to some extent, but on the other hand, it uh, gets a smaller battery and uh, fewer ports and it no longer gets a matte screen. And for me, a matte screen is actually really important. Um, so that's why I would still uh, consider that uh, version, the XPS 13 9360, as something to get even at this point. Much cheaper as well, right? If you pick well, it up. yeah, although it's also available in fewer configurations, so it's not necessarily cheaper. It starts at $800 in the US, but that's only for a Core i3, while the 9370, uh, I think it starts with a Core i5 in most regions. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, the main reason that I pick the, um, the XPS 13 9370 over the 9360 is that you get a bit better performance. Um, because it's got a dual fan cooling solution um, and it's got Windows Hello, which is nice. But the main thing that I that I really like about the laptop is actually the material. And it's really it's really quite unique with the woven glass. Um, they call it like an alpine white finish. So it's like a golden, the gold you could, you know, I'm not a huge fan about the gold, but the inside is really quite nice. Not just because of the way it looks, but because it is... Um, uh, it's, I think, completely stain proof and it doesn't leave, you don't have any fingerprints that you can leave on it. Um, you can write on it in permanent marker and then just rub it off with your finger. Um, it really makes a, it really makes the laptop more comfortable and it's sort of quality of life improvements for me. Um, you, okay. you don't have to wipe it down and you just, you just don't have to worry about it and it always looks nice. So I know that it's kind of silly to pick a laptop over another one that may have more ports and be cheaper because it looks nice, but the material is, is really impressive. Um, I, I, and I just found that I enjoyed using the laptop a lot more, a lot more than the 93, um, fi, uh, 60 and the 93 50s that I've used. Um, just over the carbon fiber that Dell uses, I think that um, their new kind of woven glass white is is a really it's a really good choice that they made, and I hope that they continue with this um, this year with their other. XPS. Perhaps they they can like make something like this in a darker ver variant because I don't yeah. really like white laptops. Right. Uh, but right. on the other hand, the the existing uh, carbon fiber uh, variant, the darker one right now. It does uh, show uh, smudges quite easily, and yeah. you have to keep cleaning it all yeah. the time. Um, so yeah. So let's go to your. So you have a second pick for Ultrabook, right? Yeah, I do have a second pick, and that's mostly because the Dell XPS 13 is actually quite expensive once you spec it up. Once you go to like 16 gigabyte of RAM and like a bigger SSD and an i7 processor. Uh, especially over here in Europe, it goes to like 2,000 euros or something uh, in my in my region. That's why I, I would also consider something else, and that's the uh, Asus ZenBook UX391. It's not uh, as uh, well known, it's not as uh, well uh, as, as, as appreciated as the Dell XPS 13, but it's actually a pretty good laptop. 
uh, that if you don't get a, a unit with some quality issues, which unfortunately happens these days, uh, if you get a good unit, uh, it's a great laptop. It's small. It's light, uh, lighter than the Dell yeah. XPS 13. It's well made. It gets a matte pounds, HD yeah. screen. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's not flimsy or something. It's it's well built. It it, it feels nice in uh, in the hand, and it should be. I think it should be reliable. Um, although, I, like I said, the Zeus quality is not all has hasn't always been yeah. like the the best. But I think they stepped up. They stepped up a little bit uh, uh, in in recent years. Unfortunately, the screen quality is not on par with the Dell XPS. It's only a uh, three hundred ish nits screen. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, the uniformity is a little bit uh, problematic. Uh, the lower corner on our particular test unit uh, was much dimmer than the middle. Yeah. I think a, so AU Optronics, um, nothing against them personally, but they do not have a good reputation. Um, and it's because I, I know that in ThinkPads, um, the AU, AU Optronics has a lot of the screens and ThinkPads, which are sort of notoriously bad. So I do hope that Asus moves to um, a different supplier, perhaps. Yeah, but you know, this is pretty much random these days. You may get a good screen, an even screen, or on the other hand, you might you might as as well get a poor screen. Um, the only advice would be to buy from a place that would allow returns. For us over here right. in Europe, uh, that's pretty easy. <clears throat> Many shops uh, accept uh, returns without any restocking uh, fees. So if you don't get the if you get like a poor uh, screen or something, you just give give that back and get the get another one. Yeah, I okay. think that's, that's that's the only way to to prevent this kind of issues. Okay, um, so shall we talk about two in ones? Yeah, mm, yeah. Okay, um, two in ones. There, there aren't as many good ones. Um, my pick would probably go towards the Surface Pro because, in my opinion, if you want a two in one, that means you will want to you will want to use it as a tablet. And the Surface Pro is an excellent tablet. It gets a nice high resolution screen, um, three by two aspect ratio. It gets pen support. Um, and uh, the performance is also there. Unfortunately, there's no USB-C. That's pretty much the only big drawback. So you have to use a proprietary charger. You can't connect several uh, specific uh, per peripherals, but otherwise it's an excellent option. On the other hand, if you want like a, a, a two-in-one that you would primarily use as a laptop and not as much as a tablet, there's also the HP Spectre X360, which is something I would recommend. Yeah, um, I still think there's too much compromise in this in this space. And again, if the Surface Pro Six um, had you, uh, Thunderbolt Three, then I would, you know, I would probably have one. But there's been issues with every single one so far. Um, they're not really repairable for me. Those are issues. I really, really liked the XPS fifteen nine five seven five that Dell made. Um, the one that had the magnetic keyboard. The, the thing is okay. that, that um, it's a bit big because it's a 15, it's a very compact, but it's a 15 inch. Um, yeah. But, you know, the pen, I really like the pen and that it, it, uh, it snapped to the body magnetically. Um, performance was pretty good, but there were just so many teething issues with because it was a new chassis and a new platform. You know, the Intel AMD um, sort of uh, crossover chips with the, um, the, uh, the, is it the Vega RX? The Vega Graphics, yes. Yeah, and and so it was just very it was very buggy, and so that's why I didn't pick anything um, for two and one. But I I'm optimistic for 2019. I think maybe 2019 is a year where we're going to see. Um, I think convertibles finally get to the point where you're not compromising as much as we have been previously. We'll see. Hopefully, for me, uh, it it would have to be smaller. And uh, it would have to have a quiet fan. Probably uh, it would have to run fanless uh, with daily use. I think that's important. Um, the, the tablet experience for me is mostly based on uh, on an uh, iPad. So I would want something that it's around those lines. It's like not possible with Windows. Yeah, like, yeah, 12, 13 inches and uh, runs quietly with okay. video and all this basic uh, stuff. And if you want to run more demanding application, yeah, then a fan will, will, will kick uh, in. 
I can accept that, but otherwise it should have to be uh, quiet. Okay, um, so let's go on to the our all around kind of um, pro pro laptop. Yeah, Work yeah. Laptop. Let's let's go for our yeah the 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 MacBook Pro of PCs. Um, I think we we both picked as the um, ThinkPad X1 Extreme or the P1 if you're going for the ISV Workstation Certified one. Um, yeah, yeah. This is this is both of our favorite picks. Um, I mean, keyboard, track point, great specs. It has two Thunderbolt three, not just one like the XPS fifteen. Um, two USB Type A's, a good SD card reader. Um, screens, yeah, mm, yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty, they're pretty good. Um, great keyboard, although there's still that issue in the firmware that the Lenovo still has not fixed despite being pointed out many times um, about the key detection issues, but that's only for really fast typers um, like me. If you're typing 80 words a minute or less, you're probably not going to run into problems. Um, it's a very solid all-around laptop, basically. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to fault. It has, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's uh, how you could generally um, characterize it. It's, it has very few flaws, and those, uh, those few flaws that it still gets, they're, you can live with it. Yeah. Um, and compared to the competition, I think it's also important to mention that it actually performs very well in demanding applications, so both in CPU loads and in games. Yeah. Um, especially if you tweak it, if you undervolt it, you tweak the CPU a little bit. <clears throat> it, it really performs uh, very well. Not sure about the Xeons in the P1, but the Core i7 options in the X1 Extreme and the P1, they actually work uh, very well yeah. while on the other hand uh, some of the other options uh, out there don't uh, aren't able to to keep this kind of hardware um, properly running yeah. i mean their cooling solutions are probably a little bit different and not as capable as uh, on uh, this one uh, it's, this is still a very expensive laptop in most regions so some people might still find its flaws a little bit hard to accept but I know that it's uh, it's available on sale in some areas, so maybe you can find it for a good price. Yeah, as I think I mentioned before, I paid around three thousand for my new, um, and then later there's a sale from Lenovo, and the price, you know, if you're in the U.S., dropped to like one thousand three hundred dollars. So for this for the same <laughs> the same specs, so you you do feel, uh, you know, I, I I still like it. So so you know, I'm I'm willing to swallow that. Um, but it's it's you know if you can get the laptop for um, under two thousand dollars with with good specs you know depending on where you live I think it's it's really a good deal for a, a great all around performance um, yeah. you know multimedia yeah, and professional work laptop. The other options here are sort of the Dell XPS fifteen which you're very experienced with and you know that you had various issues with your unit and yeah. maybe probably the the Asus ZenBook Pro which also is not. Um, it doesn't perform uh, as well. Uh, the higher spec version don't perform as well, but they're also cheaper in some regions. For instance, over here again, where yeah. uh, Dell and Lenovo's are more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the last category of our our gaming laptop picks. So yeah. how did you how did you make your picks? Well, I think it's important to consider a few different aspects for gaming laptops in 2018. And the most important one would be having a high refresh rate screen. I think this uh, was like the trend of 2018. And um, yeah, it's it good it to really see, right? It made a very big difference. Yeah, the, the gaming experience is a lot smoother and it's a lot nicer with a high refresh screen, even if you don't have G-Sync or stuff like this, because uh, some of the lower end options don't have uh, G-Sync. But uh, right now you do get 140 hertz, 44 hertz screens on laptops that sell for uh, under $1,000. So it's becoming mainstream. It's not. It's no longer something you only got on uh, on higher tier devices. Um, it's, aside from that, uh, the GPU is of course important. Um, I would uh, consider only laptops with at least a GTX 1060 GPU for uh, for this uh, category because uh, that's capable to uh, of offering uh, proper full HD gaming uh, at uh, higher refresh rates and one 
another uh, one other important aspect to consider is the cooling. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the thinner devices uh, aren't able to keep uh, the hardware at bay and uh, they throttle, they don't perform as well, or they run very loud or very hot. So it's important to read into reviews and see how each particular unit does and uh, make your pick based on, uh, on, on what these proper reviews are, are going to tell you. Uh, so your your pick for let's say ultra portable, uh, ultra My portable pick for gaming laptop. Portable, well, there are a couple of good ones. It depends on what you want, but uh, I think the the best balance, in my opinion, is in the Gigabyte uh, Aero fifteen X. Uh, yeah. It was launched towards the beginning of the year, but it's still a very good product. It's uh, it looks nice. It's uh, fairly well made. It's not the sturdiest, uh, but it's a good looking and well built device. It has a good keyboard, a lot of ports, <clears> a big battery, and the performance is pretty solid. It, of course, it does run hot. It has a couple of issues, but it's uh, it's a good uh, it's a good device. Okay. Other options would be like the Razer Blade 15, um, although they're expensive and their support is not always uh, uh, on par with uh, with those prices. And I think the Asus ROG Zephyrus M is another option if you want a full power version of the GTX 970 chip. It's a bigger yeah. device, it's a bit larger, but you have the full uh, the GTX 1070 GPU, not the Max Q variant that's available with the other uh, thinner, uh, smaller devices. How about uh, do you have a, a favorite in this? Uh, yeah. So, well, um, not not exactly. Um, probably the thing is okay. If I was going to buy a gaming laptop, um, let's say strictly speaking. I, I've tried a lot of these and I really didn't like for, for the ultra thin ones. I tend to feel like you're sacrificed too much for them in terms of like longevity. For, for example, the Razer Blade 15 is definitely the best looking, but you have to worry about the design and sort of whether or not it's going to last you. And then there's the fact that you're only getting um, a very limited T you're only getting very limited performance from the CPU because they limit the TDP to 35 Watts sustained which is not really what coffee lake needs it needs a lot more than that and but they have to do that to keep it cool um you know the yeah. gs65 was you know it looked great on paper but it's, it's you it's know it, built. it was really really poorly built it, technically it's aluminum yeah. but i mean you know you could take a bite out of it you know if you were hungry um my my, my unit was creaking all over the place so I, and I I like the Gigabyte Aero somewhat um, for for a lot of these. Okay, I'll just say that if you're going to get an ultra portable gaming laptop, don't go to 1070 because you're not going to be able to cool it. So go for one of the ones. In my opinion, you go for the one with a, with a 1060 because then you're going to actually get what you pay for, and it's going to be able to keep it cool. It's going to make the components last longer, and you're going to have a better time. Um, yeah, I think mm. 1060, 1070 max Q var variant. Yeah, I think those can be cool inside such thin chassis, but uh, 1070 is not that much. So if you want the 1070, you have to go for a full size laptop. Yeah. So, so my overall pick, my, I mean, the one that personally I really like is actually um, the Y530, um, and that's just because the de the design, um, it's not so gaudy. Uh, it's, it packs up to a 1060, which I think is is all you need uh, still. Um, a 144 hertz screen. Um, it's about 5.1 pounds or 2. Point, what is it? 2.1 uh, or 2 kilograms. So it's still fairly light. Yeah. Oh, sorry. 2.3 2. kilos. One. So so it's a, it's an average size, but I think it it does a a, pr a good job of being a very well rounded. Um, machine like so I got the feeling with for example the GS65 that I would hate to use that machine for anything other than playing games um, you know okay. with, with the trackpad the keyboard like the overall experience uh, you're just sacrificing a lot of stuff it's sort of like you know um, a sports car you know f you know like sort of like an F1 car where it's got all these components but they're wrapped sort of in and you know the lightest possible material to keep the weight down and uh, there's no pretense of that with the Y530, even though it is plastic. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a plastic. fairly, it's a fairly, you know, it's a good design, and um, and I believe it should it should cool pretty well. Um, though I know that on your model you had some issues. 
Um, from yeah. what I've seen, the the Y seven thirty cools better because it's an aluminum chassis. Um, but there may not be the high refresh rate screens available for that one yet, and it might not be available in your region. Yeah, I think they they're, they're going to have different uh, versions in different regions. So in some regions they might have uh, the high refresh rate re uh, screen, high refresh rate screens, and in other they might not. But uh, the Y seven thirty it's also an option to consider, and um, I think there are uh, there are a couple of others in this like Best Buy uh, segment uh, with a. 1060 around the 1200 I mean 1000 to 1200 dollars uh, yeah. price point um, and uh, there's the Asus FX505 that's one of them it's uh, one of these mm. new designs as well it's got small uh, small bezels uh, pretty good uh, hardware um, Unfortunately, the screen quality is not great, but it's overall pretty pretty nice laptop. The performance is there as well, and it runs a little bit cooler than the Lenovo, at least uh, on on this particular test unit that I have. Mm. Uh, the design might not be might not be yeah, tough for tough. everyone. Yeah, it's a bit Fisher Price. It's, it's supposed to be yeah, like tough. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, the probably something you want from a gaming laptop that you're going to have in your backpack and from a laptop in general, but uh, they could have went, they could have gone with a like a simpler design, in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's their choice. Uh, and another option would be the older Acer, uh, the older Acer Predator Helios, which is an older design. It's a yeah. much uglier laptop, but it's available for good prices right now. So if you don't really care about looks that much, very well rounded, the Helios could go. Yeah, you could go with uh, with this uh, with this one as well. Again, if you can accept the rather ugly looks and all the gaming as accents and logos and stuff. Sure. So, um, but the point yeah. there, are, there are actually a lot of good options. They're not. It's it's not as easy to say. It's not that easy to say. Hey, this is the laptop to get. This is the best laptop your money would buy because uh, prices and, uh, and configurations vary between regions. So I think it's important for you to, for people to uh, go into into reviews and read some reviews and see what each uh, laptop uh, does well and uh, the flaws of each laptop and yeah. then decide based <clears throat> on those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone, people have different preferences. Um, and so even if we say that, or, you know, I might pick something, you know, someone else given the exact same knowledge might not just because we have different priorities. So, you know, I, for, for you, you, you care how quiet something is while you work on it. And that's not really a, you know, um, I, I would rather the components keep cool if they're being stressed. So I don't mind if it can turn into a, a helicopter when when you're pushing everything to the max, right? Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, um, check out yeah, so. check check out reviews and look for the things. I think it's important to um, to not just pick people's um, opinions like Dave Two Ds or you know or us or Notebook Check and just say they recommended it, so I'm going to think it's the best. It, it, you need to, I think, understand what it is that you're really looking for. Yeah, yeah. and I think the experience is subjective. I mean. Each reviewer is going to see certain aspects in a in a in a certain way. Like you said, I for one like quiet laptops. I for one like ports to be placed in a specific part of the laptop, like yeah. specific designs and different features. You might not. So consider what you want. Maybe if you can see these products in person, go like in a big retail stores, a uh, retail store. If that's a possibility, go there and mm -hmm. see how it looks, see how 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 it performs, see, see how the keyboard feels. If you not just buy from a place that allows returns, I mean it's not maybe not fair for the store sometimes, but it's a possibility for at least for us here in in Europe. If you don't like it, just return. Yeah. So um, I think that com that completes our our kind of uh, best laptops more or less of 2018. Um, so if you guys want to share what you think your your best laptops are, or if you disagree or agree, please do you know um, let us know in the comments. Uh, and we'll do our best to to respond. If you have any specific questions for us about something that um, maybe you're looking for a very specific thing, you can uh, ask us there as well, and we'll we'll do our best to get back to you. Yeah. Okay. That's it for now. See you guys later. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Have a good day.